colleagues around the Clifford Chance Global Network have been observing Ramadan. We're now into the middle of Ramadan and during this holy month, Muslims fast from sunrise to sunset and they pay special attention to strengthening their faith. Here is a snapshot of what one day of Ramadan looks like from our colleagues across seven different offices. How they celebrate, fast and connect with their spirituality while fulfilling their work obligations. So I've woken up at 4.10 today. Um, our fast starts in about 10 minutes. It starts a little bit earlier every day. Today it's at 4.25 approximately. Um, so I don't really have an appetite at this time. So I'm going to have um, as much water as I can. I'm going to try and um, have enough water before we start fasting. And my husband's going to have a bit of cereal. Um, and then we're going to go to sleep. Here is the bowl of cereal. And then before sleeping, a quick prayer to start our fast. Hi. So it's now my lunch break and rather than going out to have food, I decided to stay in and do something that's not particularly riveting. So I'm just going to pop in my headphones. Then I'm going to listen to this lecture on references to nature um, in the Holy Quran. So to me, fasting is not so much about feeling hungry or thirsty, but it's about being mindful of one's actions and how you spend your time. So I've decided that I'm going to try to increase my knowledge. And in fact, it's mandated on Muslims to seek knowledge. The first word that was revealed in the Holy Quran is read. So this lunch, I am just going to press play now. Hi everyone, I've just stepped away from my desk for prayer. Throughout the year, Muslims perform five daily prayers at set times, a few of which fall during the workday. This usually means taking five to ten minutes out of our day to step away from our mundane worries and focus on our faith with the hope of returning to our work and our responsibilities with a renewed sense of purpose. So the time is now just before sunset and I'm heading off to join an iftar gathering so that we can break our fast as a community. So it's super close to iftar time now, which is obviously super exciting when you've gone so long without any food and water. Uh, but it's also like the most incredibly spiritually enriching time now um, as you approach the final hour and the final minutes. Um, it's kind of like being in this like incredibly zen-esque state where you're so serene inside and you're so conscious of the high being and all the blessings that you have, um, particularly as you're totally aware that, you know, as you're looking forward to such yummy, delicious food, or must stop thinking about food, must concentrate, um, there are people out there in the world who obviously don't have such privileges. So it's this sort of amazing elevated form of mindfulness to be in and it's such a beautiful state and it's one of my favorite times of um, fasting and it's also a time where you know it's known to kind of people are known to supplicate more and talking about food and all the yummy feast um, you kind of imagine during the day that you can gobble up so much and eat like a king or queen or monarch sorry um, but actually your tummy totally shrinks so you end up eating like a tiny smudgen of what you think you will do um, so on that note, I'm going to bid you farewell and happy iftar. Bye. Hi everyone. So I've left the office, which you can see behind me and on my way to the annual office iftar, where we get together with colleagues to break the fast together. And here we have the Abu Dhabi office breaking their fast <laughs> just before they go for a lovely iftar to stay. Okay. So this is where I'm breaking fast today, and this is the food that we're having um, just as an appetizer. We finished our iftar, and now it's time for the last part of the daily Ramadan routine, which is 
heading to the mosque for the evening taraweeh or qiyam prayers. Now these are additional optional prayers that take place uniquely during the month of Ramadan only and even though they're optional actually you'll find it's the busiest time for mosques around the world. The idea is um, to use uh, blessed nights to increase the spiritual connection that we have with, with God and also to bring home that connection that Ramadan has with the Quran because Muslims believe that the Quran was which is a scripture for Muslims was first revealed by God uh, during the month of Ramadan and so during these prayers as much of the Quran as possible will be recited we're in the mosque now waiting for the evening Taraweeh prayers to begin and while we do that it strikes me that there's really no aspect of regular life that Covid hasn't touched where previously we'd be able to stand close together in rows the, uh, we now have to stand two meters apart uh, we have to bring our own prayer mats of course have to wear the masks during the prayer which can be a little bit uncomfortable and um, the mosque has restricted the duration of the prayer to 30 minutes when ordinarily it would go on for significantly longer than that Hi everyone, today my niece and I are packing groceries for a few families. So each year during Ramadan, I'll make a public post on Facebook reaching out to families in need. With the COVID-19 pandemic causing both financial and emotional strain on most of us, there couldn't be a better time to give back. Charity to these families will not only help them financially, but will also help them spiritually. As some of you may already know, Zakat is one of the five pillars of Islam. So voluntary and charitable giving are highly encouraged during this holy month. To me, this serves as a reminder to myself to be grateful for everything that we have in terms of health, wealth, family, friends, and for all other things, whether it's too big or small, and be thankful to Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for all the blessing given by Him. And always remember, practicing gratitude in Islam is the means to greater prosperity. My aunt and I urge everyone to graciously donate and help others in need. We can all do our bit to give something back. Ramadan Mubarak to all Muslim colleagues. We wish you and your families a blessed and joyful month. Not the image that's typically conjured up when we mention the UAE, but it's not all glitzy towers. Uh, we're here in one of the industrial areas, the main industrial area of Abu Dhabi, and we're about to do. We're about to distribute some food parcels for the iftar. <laughs> Charity is a hugely important part of Islam and especially so during Ramadan. Uh, so to do our bit, a few friends have got together and we have uh, collected some money to distribute iftar parcels to some of the workers. Hi, I'm Kane from the New York office. I fasted for one day for Ramadan in support of my Muslim colleagues. I lived in the Middle East for five years, back in 2005 to 2010, so fasting, Ramadan uh, and the Eid celebrations that follow are uh, all very familiar to me. I used to actually uh, sit and eat my lunch and drink water in a, in a locked or closed meeting room uh, in my old office uh, out of respect to my colleagues. Um, the biggest thing for me that I learned from fasting for the day was the habits that we build. So I would reach for water quite often or I'd go to, to walk around and, and look in the fridge to see if I could eat something. Uh, and I really struggled with the concentration as well. Um, just one day, it was a really difficult uh, thing for me to do. And, and I can only imagine, I have a lot of respect for our, for our Muslim colleagues that have uh, undertaken fasting for the, for the holy month. Uh, so just wishing everyone a Ramadan Kareem. Oh, 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 oh,